In a home in North Galway, in Ireland, in the darkness of the late night, a single house has a glow of a candle in the kitchen window. A mother paces the kitchen, nervous as the thunder crashes outside her window. Her children finally sleeping after crying for the past several hours for the whereabouts of their father. She wonders the worst and hope it is only the dreadful weather that has kept him away so long. Then she hears it, the sound every Irish family dreads to hear. A ghostly lament ringing out above the storm, the song of the banshee. Her husband is surely dead, and like the fairy woman outside, she too weeps heavily. I was surprised as many of you might be, that The Legend of the Banshee, the pale, wailing woman of myth and folklore, is actually classified as a fairy. I'm particularly fond of the fae folk of legend. They are my personal favorite classification of fairy tale creatures, specifically those of the regal and trickster variety. Those who cannot lie, but find one way or another to lie through deception. Who sow seeds of discord and chaos for mortals for their own entertainment. I've always found them to be fascinating. But like many fairy tales and folklores, years of culture trading and probably culture theft, let's not fool ourselves, have left a trail of breadcrumbs consisting of different interpretations of the creatures over multiple countries and cultures. Thankfully, we can fully trace the origins of the Banshee and much as her lore back to Ireland and many provinces within it. But before the facts, I always like to talk about common misconceptions of with these creatures. My first interaction with the Banshee as a concept was actually in the movie Darby O'Gill and the Little People. It was a Disney movie that came out in the 80s. In that film, the Banshee is more of a evil grim reaper who outright kills her victims. In Dungeons and Dragons, the Banshee are the ghostly visage of dead elven women who are out seeking revenge. In fact, many depictions of the Banshee in modern culture portray her as a malevolent and spiteful spirit. She's often shown to hate the living, spiteful of men and jealous of women, a classic tale of woman scorned come back to take her revenge. But the true tale, the one rooted in its Irish origins, tells a much different story. Now, like I said earlier, tales change from place to place and over time, but the Banshee seems pretty rooted in Ireland with only its origins seeming to change. In most Irish cultures, the Banshee is a companion, one who either warns of a death that has happened in the family that has not been made aware of, or one who stays with the family while they mourn a death. Sometimes the Banshee is said to be an omen that death is to come, but they are much more like the traditional Grim Reaper in a sense. They don't cause death, they merely show death is to come soon. In some places in Ireland, the Banshee is thought to even call the Death Coach to take souls to the other side, that's what her song means. The Banshee is often depicted as an old woman with long green robes stroking her hair and crying out death's lament, sometimes wailing to warn those of encroaching death. While some areas describe her as tall, many accounts put her as short, between one and four feet, and this is more than likely due to her fairy origins, which are often depicted as sprites in Irish and mid-European cultures. The Banshee has long red hair, and her visage is often pale and transparent. While she is described to be in the class of fairies, she has much more common with ghosts. A modern culture didn't get everything wrong. The origins of the Banshee in some cultures do depict her as a fallen woman, normally one murdered or dying in childbirth. The wailing and lamenting that the Banshee does is called keening, a traditional vocalization technique used in Irish and Scottish funerals all the way up until the 18th century when they started to decline and almost lost the time by the mid 20th century. While the culture of the art form is no longer performed, its connection to the Banshee is something that has evolved in a different way with modern depictions showing the Banshee to be a screaming ghost. The modern day Banshee is known for her high pitched screams with the phrase screeching like a banshee being very common to depict women who scream in high-pitched shrill voices. I always try to look for the deeper meaning and moral lessons in the folktales that I cover, a way to clean everything we've talked about up. I think the Banshee represents a different kind of moral lesson, one surrounding the death and its harsh reality. When the Banshee wails, death is here, and there is no talk of cleanses or vanishing rituals for the Banshee. The songs she sings are traditional songs mortals sing at funerals. The Banshee represents a standing reality, death. She is not here to harm you. She's not evil. In fact, some legends, she even warns you away from it. She's not malevolent, but benevolent. 
She's there to help those in their worst hours get through the pain. There to be a sort of supernatural support. I think of everything we've learned of the Banshee, the biggest lesson we can learn is death is a harsh reality. But we never have to face it alone. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I just wanted to take this part of the video to kind of apologize for the lack of content since 2024 started. Especially when I started off 2024 with a video that was like, I'm going to get this channel to 5,000 subscribers. Can't fucking do that if I'm not making content. <laughs> um, I have been in a very hard rut when it comes to this channel and my horror story channel. Uh, video games are easy to make content on. You play the game, you talk about the game, you put it up. You know, uh, horror stories take a lot more. I actually have to flex my writing muscles. And uh, these videos take a lot of research. And sometimes it's, um, it's hard to focus on that. And so it's been very difficult for me to keep up with it. While I still like these videos and I still want to do more of them, um, I don't know how often they'll come about and, you know, how much production they'll have behind them. Um, I almost feel as if this channel might become more of a hobby channel, but I hope not. I hope I can continue to find motivation to research folklore and share my findings with you guys. Um, but other than that, I appreciate you guys so much. I uh, love you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.